Six to eight weeks, Elon Musk replied when asked about the next launch of SpaceX's Starship after its maiden voyage went up in flames in April. According to that timeline, we should possibly witness the second launch attempt of Starship by the end of the summer. But in reality, a bucket of cold water has just been poured on SpaceX's early launch efforts by the FAA. No Starship launch soon. Why? Stay tuned as we dive into these questions and more in this episode of Alpha Tech. It's been three long months since SpaceX launched its gigantic Starship prototype spacecraft and super heavy booster at its testing facilities in South Texas, resulting in a spectacular explosion. The launch obliterated the rocket's pad, sending huge chunks of steel and concrete flying and covering the coastal region in a layer of debris. The FAA opened a mishap investigation, which is standard when a launch doesn't go as planned. The investigation's goal is to determine the root cause of the accident and identify the action SpaceX needs to take to prevent it from happening again. The investigation, also overseen by NASA and the National Transportation Safety Board, can only close once the FAA approves SpaceX's final report, including those required actions. And further, SpaceX needs to implement the actions before Starship flies again, adding more time to the process. Shortly after the launch attempt, the FAA announced it was grounding the rocket until SpaceX completes additional environmental mitigations and ensures future mishaps don't affect public safety. The FAA will not allow a return flight to operations until it determines that any system process or procedure related to the mishap doesn't affect public safety or any other aspect of the operator's license, the spokesman said. This mishap investigation is ongoing. And as it turns out, we'll likely have to wait quite a bit more until we can watch Starship fly again. The FAA is awaiting the report that will detail the steps SpaceX needs to implement before it can try again. This signals that the next generation rocket program is still without a foundation and lacks the possibility of a second launch attempt this summer. The FAA continues to hinder Starship's launch endeavors even though SpaceX had obtained initial approval from the FAA after months of waiting. The license was suspended after the inaugural launch from its Starbase facility near Brownsville. In addition to the needed FAA approval to resume flight testing from Starbase, the company is also facing legal challenges. SpaceX has been named as a co-defendant in a federal lawsuit contesting the FAA's original approval of the Starship launch program. Environmental and indigenous groups have filed the lawsuit demanding that the FAA conduct an environmental impact statement, which could keep that rocket program grounded for several years. The plaintiffs, including the Center for Biological Diversity and American Bird Conservancy, claim that the FAA approval of the program violated federal laws because it allegedly didn't adequately consider potential harm to wildlife. In approving Starship's inaugural launch, the FAA instead relied on a Programmatic Environmental Assessment, or PEA, considered less stringent than an EIS because SpaceX itself conducted it. In fact, the groups accused the agency of foregoing an EIS on SpaceX's behalf. After submitting its PEA, SpaceX was required to take over 75 actions to comply with the National Environmental Policy Act. But the groups further alleged those actions were insufficient and that the FAA didn't consider alternative proposals, such as a timeline with fewer launches. If this lawsuit loses, FAA would be required to conduct an EIS for Starship. For context, Nearly one year passed between the draft of SpaceX's PEA and the final proposal. An EIS typically takes longer. SpaceX, the most valuable aerospace and defense country in the nation, with a net worth of nearly $150 billion, has asked the court to intervene, stating it's got a direct and substantial economic interest. Musk claims that SpaceX has invested $3 billion since 2014 in developing the Starbase facility. The facility is crucial to the company's growth, which plans to use Starship to deliver more Starlink communication satellites to orbit. Musk also plans to use the reusable rocket to transport humans to Mars. Furthermore, the significance of Starship doesn't merely confine itself to the boundaries of the company. It also holds vital implications for the presence and leadership of both the civilian and military sectors of the United States in space. In the short term, NASA selected a variant of the Starship spacecraft as a lander to bring Artemis astronauts to the lunar surface, needed for the Artemis III mission as soon as 2025. But the impact of a long-term license suspension or revocation would slow down the potential timeline for launch. Starship's launch came five months after NASA tested its own super heavy lift rocket, the Space Launch System, or SLS, that intends to transport humans back to the moon and ultimately to Mars. So far, NASA spent 12 years and over 20 
$1.5 billion on the Artemis program, the SLS, and the Orion crew capsule. Each SLS launch is estimated to cost an eye-watering $4.1 billion. SpaceX envisions each Starship launch costing under $10 million. In other words, Starship will likely make Artemis obsolete. The Starship test mission is another reminder that beyond low Earth orbit, Artemis and SLS are going to stay put for now. But Starship's future role in cost reduction beyond low Earth orbit makes each delay now even more costly in the future. Beyond NASA, Starship's part of a rapidly expanding private sector launch industry. Rocket Lab's Electron rocket launches small satellites and its in-development Neutron will deliver larger payloads. Relativity Space's forthcoming heavy lift, partially reusable Terran R, comes closer to Starship, but is still smaller and can carry less payload. But these launch systems, developed by smaller startups, are closer to competing with Falcon 9 than with Starship. Mega rockets are much more expensive and riskier. Mission failures can doom smaller companies. Virgin Orbit, which provided an operational launch system via air launch rockets to deliver small satellites to orbit, went bankrupt last year, months after a failed test. It took many years and billions of dollars for Starship to reach this year's test, and SpaceX must still continue with and iterate after an explosion. Blue Origin's forthcoming heavy lift new Glenn has already won government launch contracts and should be commercially successful. But it can carry only half of Starship's cargo tonnage to orbit. There is no current private sector equivalent that could rapidly deploy satellite mega constellations or deliver major logistical infrastructure to orbit like satellite and vehicle refueling stations, which could be critical as geopolitical tensions on Earth escalate into space. There may be a future peer commercial competitor to Starship, but surveying the current landscape and understanding how much time and money goes into building a rocket of any kind, that's unlikely to happen anytime soon. Besides, the Chinese space program has grown rapidly in recent decades. The PRC launched its first astronaut into space in 2003 and built a space station. Tiangong completed last year. Longer-term plans include building a permanent settlement on the moon called the International Lunar Research Station, which aims to build with Russia and other partner countries. While the ILRS aims to rival NASA's multilateral Artemis program, China's closely watching Starship's development. China's building its own next-generation super-heavy-lift rocket, the Long March 9. Starship development still far ahead, but it's clear which rocket China's emulating, and it's not NASA's SLS. Initially, Long March 9 was expendable. In November last year, designers switched to a version with a reusable first stage. By March of this year, China announced that it will be fully reusable. In other words, the result of the Starship test has geopolitical implications as well. Without Starship, it's not unreasonable to think that China would have reusable super heavy lift rocket capable of quickly delivering crew, cargo, and infrastructure to low Earth orbit and beyond, and not the United States. This imperative that the parties work to produce a timely resolution of the legal and regulatory issues that engage with the local community on environmental impact ensures that SpaceX has taken steps to ensure such damage to and around the site doesn't happen again, and allows for testing to move forward this year. And that'll do it for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments below because your feedback is very important to us and helps us make better videos for you to watch. Thank you for watching and we hope to see you next time. Bye.